Welcome to worship today at Grace Lutheran here in Boone, North Carolina. I am Pastor Steve, and on behalf of our whole congregation, I want to welcome you as we gather to worship in this digital way. Today is All Saints Sunday, so uh, in just a moment after the prelude, we'll do our litany of saints, and we'll read out the names of our two members who have died over this past year, but also all the names that are listed in our new Book of Saints. Uh, so don't miss that. It's coming up in just a few minutes as we remember those people God has have placed in our lives who have inspired us in our lives of faith today. Just a couple of announcements for you. A reminder, uh, Vicar Ethan, now Pastor Ethan, our former seminary intern, will be installed at Emmanuel Lutheran in High Point at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I'll be traveling down and preaching at that service. Of course, you're welcome to go in person, but if you'd like to, you're also, you also can watch online on their Facebook page. So that would be a manual high point uh, to go there. There's a link in your Friday email. Just to plug this last week, we saw our first snow flurries. Also, the temperatures dropped significantly. And one of the things that that always triggers in my mind is a reminder about our woodlot ministry who's always looking for more volunteers to help chop wood so that members of our community with need can come and fill up a truck or a car uh, and use that wood to heat their homes and cook food uh, during this particularly cold spell we're in. And finally, I just wanted to follow up a couple Sundays ago. We got to celebrate Quilt Sunday here at Grace. Uh, all those quilts were boxed up and made their way down to Hickory. Uh, Bob Etzel volunteered his van and his time and got all those down there. Along with the quilts, we were able to bring all of our packets that were rolled up in the towels. Uh, 60 of those down uh, as well for our hygiene kits that we put together for Lutheran World Relief. But not only that, uh, the quilters from their stores uh, of money, from, from selling quilts and other things, were able to send a check for $3,000 with the quilts uh, to support the work of Lutheran World Relief. And that's a wonderful thing to celebrate uh, for us as a congregation. And so thank you so much for your support of quilts and hygiene kits. Uh, and we look forward to how we'll be able to continue these important ministries moving forward.
on this All Saints Sunday, we remember the great ancestors of our faith, from Abraham to Sarah, to Paul and Phoebe, ancestors of the faith, we remember you. We remember the prophets and priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the ways of God, teachers of faith, we remember you. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, children and grandchildren, friends far and wide, those who have gone before us in our lifetime, family of our faith, we remember you. We lift up to you, O God, the names of those recorded in our book of saints, Charlotte, Frank, Betty, Charlene, John David, Gary, Antonia, Juanita, Robert Matthew, Wilmer, Mary Helen, Scott, Wilma, Coralie, Austin, Walter, Winnie, Fran, Pete, Irene, Jacob, Anna, Amy, Roy, Bell, Joe, Helen, Christine, Bobby Jean, Cleo, Ina, Alan, Howard, Betty, Eric, Lynn, Frederick, Johnny, John, Sophia, Aaron, Richard, Tom, Miriam, Beth, Lee, Philip, Jewel, Robert, Wally, Brock, Ellsbury, Darlene, Jacqueline, Stuart, Gerald, Gail, Paul, Mabel, Azalee, Don, OJ, Jim, Bill, Luke, Al, and Henny. We also lift up to you, O oh God, the names of those from within the members of our congregation who have died this past year, Cora Lee Moretz and Beth Miller, those we've named and those close to our hearts, we remember you. We give thanks, O oh God, for all who have been drawn near to you beyond this life. We trust in the hope of resurrection and the promise of new life in Christ, and know that in our grief and celebration, O oh God, you are with us through it all, and we are not left alone. In the name of Christ, in whom love lives forever, we pray. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant to us to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is our children's message time here on All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday is a special day in the life of our congregation. It's also a hard day sometimes for us as we remember those who have died before us and um, who are now with God. Um, and, and one of the things we wanted to do, and I wanted to show you this during the children's message time, is we got this book just this year. So this is a new thing for us. And in it, it's the title, The Book of Saints. And we asked members from our congregation to share names of those who have died at any point in time who they wanted to especially remember throughout the year. Can you see those names going all the way down here? And there's a second column here. And some people submitted these online and some people came to church one of those Sundays and wrote the names down. Here are all the people that we wanted to remember. So it got me thinking, I wonder if we know what a saint is. If I were to ask, what is a saint? How would you answer that? My guess is that when we think about saints, we think about people that are good all the time. But the truth is that none of us are good all the time. So what would make one a saint? In the church, we believe saints are those who have been called and baptized by God and live lives that are not perfect, but are lives of faith nonetheless. And we remember those who have gone before through the stories we share with our family and our friends. And we use those stories to help us in our own lives to imagine how we today might be as faithful as Jesus calls us to be. So on this All Saints Sunday, I want you to remember all those special people in our lives, those we've known and those we have not known, who are God's saints that we remember and who inspire us in our lives of faith. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us saints in our lives whose words and example can inspire us on our journey of faith. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of the others said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Our gospel reading today from the Gospel of John is the story of the raising of Lazarus. In John's gospel, this is something of the culmination of Jesus' ministry. All the little things he's done along the way build and build and build and build until here, just two miles outside of Jerusalem, he calls Lazarus from the grave. The story is one of the most complex, I think, in all of John's gospel. And we should admit that John's gospel is already probably the most complex of the four gospels. I think those that set the boundaries of our reading for today, picking up in verse 32 and then ending in 44, were left with a really difficult decision because the truth is that this story really begins in verse 1 of this chapter and really goes on to the end of the chapter. So the reading should have been something like verses 1 through 50 something. Now they must have had mercy on us for not having to read the whole thing. One of the problems though is that we miss out on the full story. And the whole story read together has this really powerful cyclical nature about it. In so many of the healing stories that Jesus has in John's gospel, we have Jesus performing a miracle and then teaching or explaining what it was all about. But here, this story is told in just little segments along the way. And Jesus then stops and teaches something along the way. Even in our text today, we get Jesus stopping to pray a prayer to God that people get to overhear The challenge of this text then is we really probably ought to read the whole thing. So I hope you'll do that at home on your own if you have a Bible nearby. Just read that whole 11th chapter. See, because what we miss are things like they go to tell Jesus that Lazarus is nearing death. Then he sticks around for two days where he is before traveling. Just how we get to four days that Lazarus has been dead. We miss the interaction when he arrives between Jesus and Martha, which happens first. And then Martha goes and gets Mary, and then Mary comes, and then our story picks up. And maybe even more poignantly, we miss what comes after this story. After this story, Caiaphas and the other priestly leaders in Jerusalem have heard about what has happened and conspire to kill Jesus. They decide in this moment, in the verses after our text, that he must die. Now, every Thursday at 1030, I teach a Bible study, or the preacher teaches a Bible study. It's something I inherited that Grace had been doing before I had come. And normally, when I make a handout for a Bible study, it's, I don't know, two pages long, maybe three at the most. Uh, This week, it was five pages long, almost double what I normally do. Uh, And part of that is the complexity of the passage. And so I want to acknowledge that when you read it. It is a hard passage because it connects with so many different themes. But for today in the message and here for All Saints Sunday, I thought we could drill in on what is probably the most familiar, memorable verse. The shortest verse in the Bible we're told. It's just two words in the Greek, sometimes translated, Jesus wept. In ours, it's he begins to weep. This passage I've long taken to mean that Jesus was so moved by the grief and emotion he saw in Mary and Martha and the others that he began to feel the same grief himself. And he was overcome with that grief and he too began to cry. And I I love that image, which I think is true. And that is when we hurt, God hurts with us. That when we cry, God cries with us. When the world is not right, God also knows that the world is not right. God aches for us when we are hurting. And I love that and I believe that to be true But the more I've studied this passage, the less I think that's what is happening here. You'll see there's some other layer of controversy that happens in our passage that is something beyond just the healing or resuscitation story of Lazarus. 
It's also a controversy story between Jesus and these other people. Jesus and these people that come to be around Mary and Martha as they are grieving. And what happens after Lazarus is raised is that group of people, some of them, are so put out by what Jesus has said and done that they run to the priests in Jerusalem and say, he's at it again. Do something to make it stop, to make him stop. And the more I've read this passage and commentaries on it, I, get, I guess the picture of Jesus hurting along with the people while beautiful and poignant and probably true of God's relationship with us, I don't think that is what's happening. What's interesting is that Martin Luther, when he translated from the Greek into German this text, it wasn't that Jesus was greatly disturbed in some sort of internal turmoil. Jesus was disturbed in his spirit with anger. In fact, the way Luther translates this passage is that when Jesus sees Mary and particularly these other people with Mary that come out to meet him, he is so angry at them, so frustrated that for so long he has been present with them and they still have failed to see that he cries out in anger and frustration with tears bursting from his eyes, so disappointed, not in Mary and Martha, but in these other people. You see, I think when we hear the words of Mary and Martha, we actually hear them wrong. Mary and Martha both in their own way say, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I think we hear that as something of an accusation of Jesus. You shouldn't have delayed your coming here. You should have been here by his side. If you had been here, things would have been different. But that's not what they say. That's what the crowd says. I think what Mary and Martha are saying is they're acknowledging their deep belief and trust in Jesus as one for whom anything is possible. And they're acknowledging a truth that they've come to believe, and that is... Jesus, if it had worked out that you were here, I believe that you could have done something about it. I don't think there's anger in their voices. Now the crowd, on the other hand, they're the ones that accuse Jesus. He who healed the blind man, couldn't he have done something to save his own friend if he really loved him? And I think it's this that Jesus is reacting against. He's reacting against these people that came from Jerusalem with the purpose of providing comfort and consolation to Mary and Martha, but are doing the exact opposite because they refuse to see and believe what is at this point in time right in front of him, them. Jesus' own self and thereby the resurrection and the life that he brings. They refuse to see it and therefore are making things more difficult for Mary and Martha. I think Jesus is really very angry and frustrated, and he yells at them in an outburst of anger and frustration. And then a small group of those who were yelled at by Jesus run to Jerusalem, and they say, Caiaphas and the other, you got to do something about this Jesus. He's out here yelling at people. I think Jesus is angry at these people who came to help Mary and Martha grieve and are doing the exact opposite. And he's exasperated, throwing up his hands in anger and frustration, questioning their motives, wondering how could they not see and believe. And I guess on this All Saints Sunday, it has me thinking a little bit about how often well-intentioned people come alongside us in our moments of loss and grief and how we sometimes have a tendency in those moments to say the worst and most unhelpful of things. In the years I've been in ministry, it's been amazing the things that people have reported to me that have been told to them, things that are designed to bring comfort but do the exact opposite. They'll say things like, they're in a better place, this loved one that has died of yours. Or, God needed another piano player or singer in the heavenly chorus. 
Or they'll say, oh, it's not good to be angry at God. That shows you don't really believe. Or I wonder what else you have heard in your own moments of loss. I guess I imagine in that moment that God in Jesus is is looking down at us or wherever from within us and is frustrated and angry that we persist in not really seeing and believing. I think it's possible that we can believe in the resurrection and also be sad, maybe even devastated, that we've lost a dear loved one. We can believe in the resurrection and also be angry and confused, maybe even with God, about what happened. I believe that we can believe in the resurrection and have a lot more questions about the life beyond the one we can see than answers. And I guess that's where I'm wondering if Jesus doesn't get so frustrated with us and with the world that's so insistent on providing simplistic answers that really don't match the deep and abiding hope that comes when we believe that Jesus' death opens the way of life for us and for all creation. Our society is bad at grieving. And I think this is what frustrates Jesus. But we, as people of faith, are called to stand apart from that. We look toward the baptismal font as the place where life truly begins. And the life of God that ignites within us in that water and in that word is something that continues all the way through this life that we can see today and into a life that we can still not fully imagine just yet. This is the promise and the hope of the resurrection. And the only reason believing in such a promise is possible is because in our own lives today, we get small glimpses of this true and abundant resurrected life happening in our midst. And here on All Saints Sunday, those glimpses of resurrection and true and abundant life we see in the lives of those who have gone before. Those who have died in the faith and through whose words and example our lives are inspired. And I guess I'm wondering if we can trade out with our world some of those really awful things that we say and instead trade in a deeper dwelling in the mysterious and life-giving promises of Jesus that in our death we are just beginning the fullness of life that is before us. What that looks like, we don't know entirely. So let's stop trying to guess and instead let's be with each other. I find it tremendously powerful that when Jesus went back to raise Lazarus that he didn't go to the tomb first. He could have just gone right on out there and raised Lazarus and then the sisters could have come by later and figured out what happened. No, Jesus went to Mary and Martha first. He went to them to take them by the hand so that they could come and witness this miracle of life together with him. Jesus comes as the light and life of all creation to take us by the hand in baptism and walk us in the ways of light such that we get to constantly witness the places of resurrection and new life that emerge throughout all this creation. And we can have our hope renewed over and over and over again by these glimpses in the lives of the saints, such that we might say with Jesus and in, or with Mary and Martha in full confidence to Jesus, we believe that it's possible. We don't know how and we can't explain it, but we believe that there is something more than we can fully understand to this life that we're getting just a taste of today. On this All Saints Sunday, might we join around this promise and mystery of everlasting, resurrected, true and abundant life and look to the lives of saints as the evidence that such a promise can be true for us as well. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of the church for today were prepared by Jan Burgess. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Abba, Father, thank you for holding our planet in your arms. Thank you for national and international conferences that continue to sound alarms for the health of your earth. Thank you for communities who care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cosmic Christ, thank you for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted by violence, oppression, and poverty. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we give you thanks for all who labor in healthcare. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with COVID, depression, addiction, and post-traumatic stress syndrome. Make your presence known to all who give care to a loved one and all who may draw their last breaths today. Especially today, we remember those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, taught, and loved us. Wipe away our tears and inspire us by their example. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Our worship will continue now with the offering. If you'd like to, you can pause our worship video and go over to our homepage, gracelutheranboon.org. There you'll find a drop down to donate in support of our mission to share God's love so that all are served and supported. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.